Against what OG have this time round. Do you think overall OG, they might have a bit of a better shot against Tundra here in this game too because of this? It definitely looks like a better draft overall that just fits. And now they're like the last few picks definitely make a lot more sense. I think that last one, you know, picking this puck into the clink stuff, we saw so many weaknesses. It so definitely looks a lot better, but I don't think you can ever really write off this hero. You know, this sniper, if he can keep his distance in this game, yeah, he's going to be able to rip heroes to shreds. And they do have good ways to scout. I think that's the purpose why they wanted to go for this bounty hunter. This hero in the past, it's like versus these IOs, like Chen's and Chantresses and stuff like that. It's all about like breaking and just giving information of where they want to try to set up. So I think in order for Topson to have a very successful game overall, it's going to be coming out through nine in the mid game. And he has to have a good lane, but he's set up to have a good lane versus this last rack. So, let's see how it ends up happening. Let's see what ends up going down. Play versus the Sabio, also. Another, I mean, Grandmaster is all over the place. He's always playing one of these super comfort heroes. So, yeah, they can definitely trip up the sniper if they can get the angles to flank on him. If they get a good start onto mind control and onto Seb, these relocates, early blink, then they can get the positioning onto Topson. And what'd you make of the side lanes? in this game. Uh, Did you like the Mars pick? Not necessarily the offlane hero that we're seeing too frequently right now. I still like it, though. It's it's like a nice like body frontliner for this last track and stuff like that. And he saw the Slark matchup, so as they mentioned on panel, it's two different ways to reset away from him. It can be a volatile lane, but I think with the IO, they should be able to withstand the pressure that comes out from the Slark as well as the Grim's Truck. Unless Seb gets caught too many times. He has to be a little careful with his positioning. Yeah, quite a, a good hero ending, ending up against sort of Tundra's mid right now. Sniper, he yeah. does not want to get caught in an arena. No. He has to be very careful with his distance. And I think that's why we'll see that exact build that they were talking about, right? He does really like that Diffusal Blade, but we'll definitely see early pickups onto, onto like, you know, that uh, Hurricane Pike, Shard, etc. to distance himself, so. Let's see what 19 will do. We don't get to see a lot of bounty. So I'm, I'm, worried, I'm wondering what he's going to be able to actually do in the laning phase to slow down Yoragi at all. I don't think they're going to be able to slow down Yoragi. Maybe they get some kills onto Kitrak that's unexpected with some gush and stuff, but I'd be shocked if they're able to actually slow down Yoragi much. Trying his best to trade with the two of them on these early levels. Should be fine. Super fine, holding the wave as it is. Yep. All three lanes. Looking pretty good so far mid. I think that's the one that perhaps will slowly... I mean, maybe the sniper actually doesn't... Even able... Isn't able actually to pressure the last track as much. Top is, lane. Less lightning is still Andra, good. They will actually get the first blood there. Nine able to strike, take down Kirak. Nice. Just before they lose 33 themselves. So one for one. First Four blood going for Tundra. Cool. Not slowing down Yoragi, though. That's the only thing they can really do is get these like kills onto the edge because he's squishy, squishy with the gush. Yeah, they've done a really good job of dishing out the damage towards the slark down bottom, making sure that Skeeter has a bit of a slow start in this safe lane. Yeah, actually, I, I really do like, like the Mars with the Io. I think that's the difference maker, right? Because sometimes the harassment can build up onto this hero, onto Mars in particular, because you're low armor. But yeah, the Io. As long as Seb doesn't get caught by something, this lane should be safe for MC. I'm just I'm just staring at the mid lane quite a bit here, so for these side lanes, we'll see what happens. But so far, yeah, BZM able to get quite a bit of lastage with this 90 damage lightning. It's actually very hard nowadays to get any type of denies on the sniper versus that lash lightning. Topson's gotten four so far, but pretty close in that mid matchup. All the spam on the bottom lane. How are they doing on the regen? Just, yeah, Skeeter's just got himself a salve delivered out. Okay. And they did get, they did grab the healing lotus as well too. So, kid track. War cries up. Much harder for them to get aggressive onto him now. And they managed to regain sentry wall control of this top, top lane for now. OG. Mm -hmm. A little bit harder for Nine to play into. Yep, they've got sentry control, so they're also going to have the camp open as well, too. So Nine, he kind of has to keep body blocking that hard camp to ensure that Kitrak won't be able to grab a creep at some point soon. Oh, mid! It's Obson! Oh, BZM is trying to go in for this! Lightning! And he's got it! He's got it! Able to step up and take him down. He will fall, but he'll take that any day of the week, getting that the solo unreal. kill against Topson. The lightning spam, just a bit too much. Snag does get a ton of experience again, just like we saw him do last time on the Grim. Holds the creep wave actually outside the tower too, so Thompson will be able to come back in and get that XP. But a nice kill from BZM. Oh, 
reminds me a bit more of that, especially if they do start to get some support rotations from OG. Mm -hmm. Coming in to double up with BZM to look to take down tops and sniper in these vulnerable moments. Definitely could see that in particular from like Hit Track if he finds himself like a nice creep, because at some point maybe he does ditch away from top because Yoragi's just so safe. But yeah, this MC, this MC Mars so far, I love the way that he's building as well. Double Bracer, getting a soul ring as well, just all about this early items as Jesus tops it. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Putting in the hurt onto BZM. Yeah, I really like these items so far. MC, very tanky, can keep himself down here. In the meantime, Seb, he's even getting all these stacks going. They're breaking the lanes, so 33's feeling like he's not going to die up top either since he's playing versus a spin and Enchantress, so 9 is going to start rotating. I it's think, a difficult kill to go for, though. I think they actually saw him, too. He didn't invis in time, and he was right next to the creep wave, so... Let's see if they are aware of it. I mean, I, I don't think they're killing either of these, with these Doesn't seem even like with the it. three of them here. I wouldn't think so, unless Seb is very deep forward and just makes a mistake. He's killing MC very unlikely. He is all in on the early game items, double bracer soul ring, so. Yeah, they've got the sentry drop down. I mean, they, they, yeah, they know they completely what's going on here. Oh, geez, so. I'm pretty sure he showed. <laughs> So Kit Track with that information immediately leaves the top lane. It's that 1v1 Sven versus Tide. He's walking toward mid. Power runes. OG looking to set up for them. Lots of rotations from the support toward this mid. Radiant's courier has been killed. Radiant are scanning. And they want to prepare for these. This power rune here, six minutes in. Who's going to get it? They're setting up three heroes bottom on the side of Tundra. BZM. Simple be here to help out. Nine. It's a lot of damage. Of two of them. Topson holding the high ground. And he's going to be able to take what down one and maybe able to get more step. Also to get popped here by the sniper. Potentially even a third. There's another shadow walk. And the shrapnel out. And indeed it will be. Three kills in the oh, mid. Oh, two oh. of them go in the way of Topson. Ho ho ha ha. They got themselves caught in the river. Verse three. And they even snipe the pine cone. Uh, Topson was just in the perfect spot on the high ground. They can't get on top of him. And with the two supports from Tundra, even though OG matched on the numbers, Sniper in this position, he's going to be able to do the damage. And a, a beautiful setup there with the Inkswell. Picture perfect. Inkswell on three with a shrapnel right on top of him. You couldn't have asked for better. Up until that point, it's not going too badly really for OG, but that sort of play around the mid, giving Topson a double kill. That's concerning. Yeah, you definitely never want to give this man kills like this for his out-of-the-game items. He loves to build this early aggressive lead. Treads, one Wraith Bent's done. Oh, easy Wisdom Room for nine as well. Takes it away from Seb. Oof. And yeah, 33 is going to claim the other. So an advantage lead here for the side of Tundra on the experience. Still this last hits overall. OG farming well, at least in these lanes. And they've got stacks to work with. But these oh these supports now they're going to be very around. high level. I mean, can snaking a nine step up here? Kind of suicide. Uh, they'll, they'll maybe look to go aggressive on to, to mind control. The creep actually roots him. So going to get the spear push back. Um, yeah. Good knock back <laughs> with the god's rebuke as well. So no connection with the stun. Even if it was there, unlikely to get the yeah. kill. Still very hard to take him down. And as uh, Skeeter, you know, doesn't want to get too aggressive. Still yet to hit the six. It's close though. Yeah. MC just a bit too tanky with all these early game items. But they're just moving around now at this point. These two supports, as we mentioned, for Tundra, they're very high level, so likely to just constantly swing they're around. They're going to go for 33 here with the four of them. With BZM, they should have enough. Follow-up stun will be ready if necessary. I mean, 33 is speedy, but Flood Grenade comes in. Oh, and we'll get him. Takes the four of them, but they get 33 out of the top lane. Support takes the kill. So BZM, Noriragi will claim that one. Mid tower, getting some pressure now to Topson. This is the build that I've seen him do every time, actually. So, That's correct build. Yep, it's super nice to be able to get these type of early timings. Nine. That's the connection. Oh, they'll have the damage. Surely here with Topson stepping up, they do. BZM goes down. I mean, Topson can look to chase up for more with nine leading in. They're so fragile. I mean, they're going to get another step. Also to fall. And they have track online. These supports because the Wisdom runes. Not going to be able to get that further kill, but some big snowball kills that's coming out already early on. Thompson's getting a lot for one and two already here from the mid sniper. Yep, and the Diffusal Blade is the build that we've seen him do every single time. And this is the same skill build I've seen him do every game. It's 0 2 2, and then he puts four in Shrapnel because he starts just getting involved and in getting, I mean, kill hungry. And that's literally the way Thompson always seems to play. So, yeah, it's going to be an early timing coming out for this one. Yoragi farming in a very deep area of the map. And but, he uh, actually, he's actually juked, juked them. 
<laughs> okay. Looked like he was potentially going to die, but the takes the right route. Tower is under attack. Back to the stacks. I'm checking to see what when the bl like, I mean, it's got to be early blink daggers that got to come out, right? So for MC, I think now he's got his phase, he's got stolen, got bracer, needs to kill blink. You absolutely need a way to cap close on top of the sniper next, and it's gonna have to come out from the Mars. I'd be astonished. They might have a, a good shot of taking down MC here. They should. The silence is on. And Skeeter's in, ready to provide the damage. Mind control will manage to push him back. Cannot save himself. Another kill to be found for Tundra as. Whilst the start of this game definitely wasn't as drastic as game one, it's starting to lead into the way of Tundra once more. And those are track kills that are starting to build up as well too, so a little bit of extra money. A medallion's already online on the bounty hunter, so Solar Crest, it's gonna come out real fast for him to throw onto this sniper to just peep from the back lines. Hey, it pretty much has it done. Yeah, Diffusal is done in one more creep. Oh, yeah, Thompson, he's gonna be an issue. Uh, how do you actually... Uh, Giragi can't show up to fights at all until he also probably has some type of blink, because I think like three or four hits from this defusal and he's out of mana. And very fragile supports too, so it's gonna be... I mean, it's up to mind control really in particular early game to protect these supports, because Yuragi, I think he's gonna take some time to show up into these fights, and yeah. They these squishy supports will just die to top. They're gonna try and step on 33. They're bringing mind control in with the arena. Oh, and they're even reloading. Yeah, they're using everything they want to take down 33. He's able to pop the Ravage. This is a five-man Ravage as he walks this one off. He's got phase boots too, so he's speedy. It's gonna take a bit here for OG to keep chasing him. It should get him, but uh, definitely some space being created here by the Tide. I mean, oh, did you I mean, say, say this? They took him back out. I mean, with, with mind control alone, does he actually have the damage? Should. He should be close. I mean, Anchor Smash is going to go off. They got him. That's a fair bit of space. A fair bit of good old fashioned space there made by 33. I mean, tons of space. Thompson just clearing out mid. Skater getting this crazy farm bottom, and he's also getting closer and closer to Diffusal Blade, so they're going to be double dipping on this Mana Burn versus a Sven versus a Mars. These heroes can absolutely suffer once you start getting those hits on them. 8 to 4, mid tower. Soon to fall. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Yeah, nine just continuing to just give this information, protecting Topson. And they're keeping the catapult alive this whole time. So yeah, this this mid tower falling very early on, and it's likely for them to grab a power rune too. Which one will it be? Arcane rune. BZM tumble. Okay, nice. You can actually take it away. I mean, where do OG make the moves? There's a couple of times, right, where they've gone for 33. They have managed to take him down. Is, is, is that sort of the best game plan right now for them to keep looking for this tide? Or, or do they have to look elsewhere? I, it definitely starts to feel like they're going to have to look elsewhere, but it's difficult for them to find a different target is the issue. Because Slark is very sneaky and the Sniper's playing so far back. So maybe they just feel like 33 is the easiest one for them to go for, but hey, not easy. He's going to turn up to back up Mind Control there in an effort to turn things around. They'll get... No, I know you're on the side. We're caught by the dust. 33, full HP. He's speedy. See if they can get them with the Yule set up. Snaking. It's also being looked towards. They're trying to take down both of them. Spear will connect. Look at the Grim Stroke, no questions nice. asked. 33 is kind of turning it around here. And the Sniper's TPing in. Here comes Topson, and here comes Skidder also. Double defusals at the ready. I mean, they may, they may have lost two heroes, Tundra, but Tundra could it still end up being the team cleaning this one up if OG don't back out in time. OG's got to start bailing. Scary. God strength wearing off. And 33 just running back at them. They spent a lot of time trying to chase for the tide. 33's full HP, pretty much. Skeeter's in. They'll get kit racked slowly but surely. And indeed, the rest of OG, they've got to run. Sad tidings. And Nine is scouting them. He's actually considering maybe getting a type of catch here onto seven. Thompson's, Thompson's here. still stepping up. Can't quite get the get the stun connection onto them. got to go full retreat, OG. And the tower now to fall. That's five heroes back to back that OG swung toward the top side. They get the tide one of the times at the second time. They end up just kind of wasting a lot. And a smoke now coming out from Tundra. They've got Ravage at the ready. And these heroes are going to get shredded. BZM, he's so fragile at this point. He has a Yules for setup, but HP-wise, he is incredibly squishy. That snap's going to get split from him. Dead in no time. 
And BZM's being stalked. And Nine still got eyes on him, so no real sort of TP play available for BZM. He's scouting him with the Edict. And he's completely alone. But he's going down. Does not have his eye on help out. He'll try for the TP now. He actually's going to be... Okay, that okay. was cool. Wow. Sends Nine up in the air, and with that bounty hunter out of the, the fight, leaves no further way for his TP to be stopped. Good escape from BZM. Set respects it. Yeah, I thought they'd actually be able to have a connection with Stun, but no, nothing. Wow. Well done. Eel Scepter coming into play. Hiragi's still getting some pretty good farm. How's the blink looking on MC? It's still a, it's still delayed. So far, the Tundra game plan does seem to be working out again. They're getting a lot of farm. This bounty hunter, he's got the Solar Crest finished up to buff up his allies too. They've got a lot of different ways to kind of disengage, too. That's the one thing I've been looking at as the game progresses, right? Panel mentioned it at some points, too. They're going to start getting these shards that are going to be really valuable. Not just the Spark shard, but the Sniper shard, and even the Grimstroke shard. You know, you get this latch that comes out from the Mars in particular. They can get the dispels off, and Nine seems like he's found another target. Skeeter's here, ready to pick up another Essence shift stack. Three-man track. And that is, I think that actually is the shard already finished up now for snaking. So claims himself that kill. It's about 20 gold off from it. BZM, careful. Often with the setup and with the damage, BZM. He'll yules himself, but he's be, he's going to be going down on the way down from that yules. Another kill for Thompson. It's it's starting to get messy, and as you say, with it, bounty hunter in the mix, that lead is going to go rose so quickly if Tundra continue to find these kills. They need to. They just need to wait for MC's blink dagger. They need to stop giving up these kills to the side of Tundra until this blink comes out. Then they can actually look to fight back. And they're gonna have a BKB timing also from Hiragi. So that's gonna kind of be the indicator of when they want to fight. But yeah, so far these last few moments, these last like seven, eight minutes or so, Tundra able to find a crazy amount. And Thompson, Dragon Lens finished, and now he's got a shard. Or sorry, uh, haste rune. And Snaking has the shard in order to protect him. He does have the shard, sorry. They're going straight for Thompson. He's got a haste. Can they get the connection? Ooh, stun. There it goes. There's the opening. Nice yours. He's going to be able to force to the side, but yeah, Thompson, he will die. Here. Nicely done. Great yours to dispel that haste. to come in with the BKB and the God Strength, but... Oh, they're actually bringing them bottom. MC's here. He locate coming through. 33 has a pipe. He's Barely back. tanky. Same time, Yoragi. He's been toyed around with by nine. 33 will pop the Ravage in an attempt to escape from this. And he will be able to. The re-relocate. Kaskita able to feed off Seb in the mid lane, get another SS shift stack. Get another track kill. 33's just a bit too much right now. They were able to kill him off a couple of times earlier, but at this point... Yeah. Tide is just not a target. Have the arena. Big arena. Skeeter, Skeeter's able to get the Shadow Dance up in time. Turns over towards Mind Control. Mind Control, he's able to walk back into the stage of the Tier 2 Tower. This time, 33 will fall. Beautiful arena from MC. Got the Yule set up on a Skeeter. Skeeter, can he bounce out? He's able to get down to the low ground. Impetus coming in. BZM chasing him out. Mind Control hits the spear. They'll get the catch. They'll get another. Thompson now. Only him and Snaking left behind. OG, they're in with the chase. Can they catch the sniper? Hey, they're very fast. It's a, it's a 550 movement speed, Yoragi. He's up for the high ground with the stun. It's there in time. We'll get spelled off. And he's able to knock them back once more with a grenade. But the slow is in from Kitrak. They want got this blink. sniper kill. Going up to the tier two. Spear in. They should get him. Tops into full. OG with a fantastic fight. A fantastic fight, a great buyback from Seb, honestly, to come in and get that little bit of extra healing for his teammates. Off of the Blink Dagger there from MC, that's the reveal. Gets a beautiful catch. A bit of an overextension there from Tundra, but probably not expecting these buybacks. Or this one buyback in particular. And now they've got, what, Blink Dagger on the Lash also, too, and I imagine that Yuragi's gonna get one pretty soon, too, so... They're gonna have triple Blink Daggers now versus the Sniper. And that is the one thing, as we, we saw in that last instance, if, if the fight does start to fall apart for Tundra, they lose 33 on the front lines, it, it can barrel out of control very much in OG's favor. You know, if Thompson does not have heroes to stand between him and the enemy, this sniper's going to be in a dangerous position. Yeah, and so far with OG, with the way that they've kind of forced Force 33 in a position now, like two or three times to use this Ravage and just kind of run away. His team's not around it, rally to be able to do damage during anything like that, so... 
Some great moves from OG to get things back into control. A very aggressive build from the Lash, right? The Blink, the Yules, not something yeah. you see every single time. It tends to just be usually that Bloodstone, but it has to deviate a little bit this game since he's playing versus the Sniper. Tundra? Definitely, you can see the, the, their demeanor on the map right now shaking up a bit here after these last few moments from OG. Yeah, Yuragi, that's gonna, that's gonna be the triple blink dagger finished up. So yeah, they, they can always show up to these fights now on OG if they can get the catch into the back lines. A BZM. BZM, very low mana. Set behind him. Step's gonna have to take him out. Do they dive? I don't think so. OG, they're setting up to protect Seb. And there's that blink, so they have three blinks online. Yeah, completely under the sword though, so Tundra, they'll know what's up. And then smoke up themselves in order to get away, keep the distance. It's all just trying to get this itemization. Getting this timings here, it looks like, but it's giving I me mean, so much farm to Yuragi. He is massive, level 15. Getting scouted out He's here from nine. Zone. He is on his own. He's gonna try for a bit of a solo play. I mean, they remember, the relocates on cooldowns. So there's no easy backup to come in for him. Starting to poke Yuragi. And they're coming in with the TPs now, and he is tanky, and of course, does have BKB if he feels threatened. He'll pop it now. Now the backup's turned up. Steps able to TP in, tether across to Yuragi. They'll look to chase down nine. They've caught him with the dust. Couple more hits. One more stun. Doesn't even need it. I mean, Yuragi, knowing his uh, limits this game, he knows how strong he is. He could just walk up like this, and uh, not a lot that even the three heroes there could do uh, to scare this Sven. This Sven, quite ahead right now. Yeah, quite a beast at this moment. And good move. I like the denying beeps as well there, too, from Seb. Very appropriate as he comes in with the dust to get, make sure that they can get that kill. And now, they'll get themselves a Tormentor, and Kitrak, he's the one who actually claims it. Sporink online. He's also, I think, got a. He's got his Dragon Lance too. So, starting to get some scaling also onto this Enchantress as well, too. Yeah, OG. Looking good in it these last, looking, like, yeah, six good. minutes or so. And in a game where Sven, I mean, as has been many times this patch, one of the S tier carries mm -hmm. is in a fantastic spot and against a lot of heroes that don't really want to deal with him. It's nope. not. Turning, to be, turning out to be kind of smooth sailings for the sniper, Topson. He's got a lot of things to be scared of this game. He's incredibly fragile, and there's so many ways now at this point to get on top of him. God Strength, it's constantly up also, too, once you get that talent, the 15 talent. So it's back at the ready. He's almost level 18 on Yuragi now, too. Getting very, very good timings. And yeah, I, if he does commit for the Silver Edge, I don't mind it at all. He's playing versus the Tidehunter. It's definitely going to be yep. super valuable. So Yeah, I mean, with that, you can jump and burst any of the heroes on Tundra's lineup. Yeah, then they can just straight up initiate on the Tide, because usually 33 is going to be kind of the one standing in the front of everything, tanking everything. When that Silver Edge, if he does go for it, comes out, yeah, they can just full commit onto him. Oh, sure, yeah, BKB, God Strength, Silver Edge, the Tide's going to die. Yeah. And uh, not really the best methods for Tundra's heroes to save one of them, right? They don't really have... No Depth Shroud yet. Outside sort of what the ink swell, and uh, yeah, sure, the Shard on the Slark, which he is queuing up next. He needs, so, he needs his BKB they've got first. To, they've, they've got to have these saves. Yeah. Oh, and they're set up Skitter. And there's the jump. Able to do it perfectly Deleted. around the Dark Pact. Hey, he was farming under Vision. So he was under that ward. OG immediately take advantage of that. And they still have God Strength active. Roche, it's on the bottom side too. Might start to poke it. I mean, are they still going to find 9 though? Nah. Still for the Roche. I mean, they don't have to take it down right. 9 could go for a steal. Would that be? It would even chance this. Hey, why not? I mean, <laughs> he's gonna see that. But he knows they're in there. If he, it, I mean, he I want to see him try and walk in and pick it up. I'm looking, looking for sentries. Kitrax coming in with the sentry right okay. now. Okay, put the sentry. He down. put it's it down. There. <laughs> it's there. Nice try, nine. He's not getting away with that nine. <laughs> <laughs> Big hits here, OG. Ever since that dive onto that tier two bottom, yeah, it's all been looking in favor of them. Yeah, it's, really, it's looking really, really good. They're rallying around Juragi Sven yep. fantastically. Really just used, using how farm this Sven is to perfection. Mm -hmm. They're forcing these fights and, and getting these jumps, and it's far too much for Tundra to deal with right now. Juragi jumps on top. He's 
gonna kill you. There's no questions asked. This fan, he'll kill any of these heroes. And he, he doesn't seem to have much fear at all. Oh, 33, gets caught by the Ogre Smash. We'll be able to get himself away. And a BKB now also finished on the Mars. So MC, he's completely online to also just freely initiate into these fights now. Mm -hmm. Tundra looks like they're identifying that at the moment. Oh, geez, a bit split up. Trying to get a catch here, Skitter. Won't be able to get a connection. Might have to sell for Kit Track if they want to turn towards him. But Yoragi's I mean, here. OG's got a lot of backup. They can they, they can take this fight. They're happy this, for, for this fight to be brought towards them. Yoragi jumps it over towards Nine. Stunners for now as he stands to the side, but Nine still falls. Skitter pops the ult, attempting to come in and onto BZM. But he's got to be careful as this Shadow Dance comes to an end. He's got to run. As Yuragi turns towards him, couple of hits will bring Skidder down low. They've got him. Got him on the town. Another one for Yuragi. Yuragi jumps in under the tier two. He's ready to consider looking for more. As the Ghost Red continues, he's been caught by another disarm. But they're in on a snaking. It's and Topson. Dead on Tundra. This fight falling apart. Mind control should be able to get the angle. Topson will knock him back with the grenade. He's but surrounded. He's completely surrounded. Topson to fall. OG in absolute control now of this game. 5k lead, triple kill for Yuragi. This Sven looking to be in a spot where I don't see him letting this game slip away from him. He's 8 0 8. No mistakes being made this time round. Yuragi looking unstoppable. A long distance since we saw Sniper Thompson being able to peep people at all. He literally couldn't even hit a target inside of this fight. Even though Skitter is acting as the body on the high ground, Thompson's terrified to walk in because MC, he's just holding his ult, yeah. holding his blink dagger, waiting for the Sniper to show. Very good plays from OG. And there's that Silver Edge also finished up for Tundra. Things just... How do they take fights now at this point? We saw, what, two Halberds or three Halberds coming out from 33, but their initiation is just non-existent now. They've got to find these pick-offs, but it's it's pretty hard with how well OG's been playing around one yep. another. Very few situations in this game where OG's been caught out alone. And there's just no downtime. Look, Yoragi got strengths back up, and he's scouting with this Silver Edge. He saw nine tri trickling down toward bottom. Always at the ready to fight now on OG. Thompson, he's under reward. Does get the grenade off. Can he get away though? Um, TPs are coming in, they have to. But it doesn't matter, surely. Thompson, he's still gonna go down. Yuragi's in on top of him. The takes down Thompson, takes down nine. 33 is snaky. What can they do against the five of them? Absolutely nothing. That As all four go down, triple kill for Kit Rack, because why not? Why not? I mean, what was this, a sprink that comes in or something that gets the last hits? But either way. Oh, this is getting messy. I mean, it's looking impossible for them to even touch anybody. Everyone's like full HP. They just can't save their sniper at this point. No. Nope. Topson, he, he gets just destroyed in every single fight. There's no way to keep the sniper alive outside of the base. And 33 can't do anything. He doesn't have the mana, number one, to rabbit, but even if he does try to throw it out there at all, it does nothing. They're all BKB protected. Yeah, you can see the face of snaking. Yep. He's feeling like this one is very soon to be over. Yeah, super impressive stuff from OG here in this game, too, after what was an impossible game one for them, really. Especially yep. after the draft, it certainly seemed that they kind of dealt themselves a rough hand this game. Maybe it's sort of the, the last pick, a bit of a trap. You know, this time round, what Tundra coming in with that sniper pick, True. and it has been punished. It was a pick for the lane, but for the game, as we're seeing, it's not working out at all. He's, yeah, I don't think I've seen him really hit heroes in the last 12 minutes or so. He, can't, he just has he to just run. He just cannot. He just literally has to run away. And OG, there's no downtime. God strength, it's back up. Yeah. Mars ult as well, 15 seconds. And there's no run in from these heroes. No. This is the way pretty much the Tundra played in the last game. Just super aggressive, giving zero space. I mean, they could go on 33, and they will. Absolutely. They'll happily jump the tide. Bye bye. And a tower to fall, and it's around the Wisdom Rune as well. So OG, multiple different objectives that they can get off of that kill. And they didn't have to things that consistently. They don't have to parp the Mars ult or anything like that too. So they just pop a God Strength. They kill this side, and they can easily go for this next upcoming fight with that Mars Arena. Yeah, there's no slowdown on the action here from OG. They can go for kills pretty much any second of the game when they're all up. Mm -hmm. So much more. Radiant structures are fortified. Skitter control. Try and play around with Skeeter, yeah. BKB and a TP out so gonna have to be the order of the day that Radiance top tower is under attack. Easy way to force it. And now there's no BKB to protect this Lark. They can I mean they can look to run at them. God strength up in 30 seconds. Just constantly sweeping the map looking for action. Yeah, the damage just isn't there. No. Yeah, I, I really do like the way that BZM did end up building. I was at first when I saw the Yules, I was a little, you know, a little questioned about it, but it's worked 
beautifully. And him having this Sven, having this eye, he doesn't have to build armor. He just has this war cry constantly in the fights too, so he's just unbelievably durable. Waiting for his opportunity to jump. God strength's up in five. Stepping out quite a bit here, Tundra. Up towards the river. A smoke as well. Got eyes on mind control, but OG, they're gonna have eyes on them as well. Mind control tries with the jump and goes for the BKB. Won't quite right latch the spear. 33 holding back on the ravage for now. Now let it go, but the Yules is there. BZM able to dodge it, dodge it as he's up into the air. The damage being kicked out upon him. Skeeter's trying to focus the left. Same for Thompson. They really want to bring BZM down. Do they have the damage? Finally, they do. They've got the kill. That's one. If they can get anything more, spear from Mind Control pushes back Topson. Kitrat continue to stay on top of the sniper. Topson bounces back with a grenade, but Yuragi jumps in, closes the gap. Topson gets cleaned up. It's three dead on Tundra. As Tundra, they have to do everything to take down BZM, and it costs them four lives. And it's like the most ideal positioning, too, from Topson, right? He's literally all the way on the high ground, but all takes his one blink dagger oh, from this. Oh, that's for Skeeter. Look at this. Mind Control. They'll jump across Skeeter. Does have BKB. He also does have an awful lot of essence shift tech. He's up to 43 right now. But he's now. alone. He's got Shadow Dance up. Can he get the ult off? He can, and he can go for the TP if they've got any sort of spear or anything to stop this. They yep. do. Spears back up. They'll be able to stop the TP through the Shadow Dance. They'll get Skeeter as well. It's a team wipe from OG. MC, he is absolutely... This Mars pick has absolutely delivered. Literally, since he got the Blink Dagger, that's where it feels like everything turned. And they've just been in full control. I don't, how many kills has Tundra actually gotten? I think they've gotten one kill I think just in the BCM last like, one, right? 12 to 15 minutes or so, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, they got a last rack at 15 minutes, and then they got a last rack at 30. So yeah, in 15 minutes, they've gotten two kills. OG. Running at him. Their only hope now is the high ground defense, Tundra. And they have got a sniper. Still the problem lies in that half of OG's lineup, they don't mind jumping past tier 3, no. jumping past tier 4s at this point, Fog. There's not, not even your own base is safe here for Thompson. No, and it, more than even half, right? Because then I, Seb could even just relocate behind you as well, too. The fountain. They could just jump right in on top of you. So. Even the fountain's not safe. No, they can absolutely just dive forward here. And they just can't stop Yuragi as he just continues to... 12-0-13. Now, this is uh, de definitely one of Yuragi's finest performance here. A couple of rough games, remember this one. Couldn't be any better. No. Perfect stuff on the Sven. Yeah, just great synergy with the way that the draft works out with the span, with the lash and everything with yeah. what they're playing against. They just, they work so well off of each other. Nine. BCM. Bit deep, but MC. Uh, he's got mind control and the rest of the team's coming across. There's no fight to be had here for Tundra. They don't want to go for this. MC, does he have a full ref Oh my god, he pretty much has a full refresher on this Mars now too. Got to hope for some type of massive overextension, and by massive, I mean like the multiple dives into tier fours or something like that. And even then, will they even have the damage heal to kill this Yuragi? Look how quick he takes everything out. He's hitting for 700 something damage here already. What can they do? 20k behind right now, Tundra. Ooh, Yuragi just had to put the BKB. Gotta give a little bit more respect than just walking onto a high ground like that. There is Gush Solar Crest, bit of minus armor. And with that, okay, Tundra's gonna try to seize an opportunity because BKB God Strength is down. All this right. is definitely their moment. But not an easy moment either because my control has said he does have Refresher finished up. Yeah, he's got full mana, of course, with the Soaring. Should be enough to, to allow him to get two rounds of the spells out. 40 seconds until that God Strength is up to. A shard purchased up. I mean, I love it always. This Sven shard is unbelievably good, especially when he's playing with this Lesh. It's war cry. 45 seconds to Roshan as well, so one fight should secure that next round of Aegis. 20 seconds on God's strength in Yuragi. Does Tundra want to do this? Walking into this high ground is risky. Very risky. Yeah, they're, they're falling back. Topson's going top. Yeah. Doesn't want to try and force this. They tried to seize that, you know, small window that they had during God's strength, but yeah, OG. They know what they're doing. They are setting Nine. up here. Don't ski to buy him, but bye bye. Back out to the bottom. They re relocate into an instant smoke. There's a track, of course, that was onto Yuragi. He will show himself. They will know that this smoke is happening, but they might be able to find a catch anyway. Snaking. He's slow. 
And they see him. Yeah, easy catch with all these blinks. And Roshan is up. Prime for the picking. And 6,000. Iragi is pretty much maxed out already. It's so early on that he's already got all these items. Yeah, this hero. I was considering the uh, swift blink, but it'll, it'll opt for getting the satanic gun first. Just for him. Cheese. Oh, okay, of course, uh, for the stab at the moment on the IO. We're ready to take that. They're just, they're getting just so much. This, this Sabbath just continues to be insanely high level too. He's level 19 on the IO. Cause he's paired up with the Spanner. He's paired up with the Lesh constantly. So very tanky IO and at the meanwhile too. And it's usually the target that you have to focus fire, right? You have to kill the IO at the start of these fights. Yeah, good luck with that. Are scanning. Just spotted out the DD rune as well. OG, if they want to head over and pick that up for the next move. Yuragi's making his way there. So DD spent. Oh goodness. Can Tundra pull together a high ground defense? Silver Edge was done on Topston, so a bit of progress. He knows how dangerous even his own base is, though, and he will still be queuing up the BKB next. Speed up. He's going to try something here. The BZM. Seb, he's ready to take the two of them out of there. How many stacks did he get? Only eight. Oh, Paladin Sword. I was waiting to see if Seb did get it. Yeah, he got the Paladin Sword. So even more healing that's going to be coming out from him on top of his Holy Locket. I've been careful about how they go for the next move here, OG. They've got that Aegis and Cheese. They have all their ultimates. Not quite looking to, to force the high ground as of yet. Happy to just know that Tundra's pushed back into their base, farm out the map, and, and look to get their next round of items done by the looks of it. Yep, there's Mind plenty. Control wants his Octarine, BZM. But he's close to the BKB, just about a thousand gold. That might be what could be less. Then he yeah. can front line as well, right, and start pumping damage out into the towers. That might be what they're what they're fully waiting for to full commit forward. Except spirit will connect. Don't have stun though. MC hunting. They always have this relocate now. It's constantly going to be up. Level 20 has been hit on the IO. So yeah, 50 second cooldown. They can constantly address these lanes and catch anybody who comes out. But not many heroes are going out on the side of Tundra. I think Nine's going to be able to steal this Wisdom Rune. Oh, Good maybe luck not. With that. Never mind. <laughs> There's a relocate coming in. Nine. Yeah. He's not able to get away with that. Baited. They don't even take it. Sorry, little Wisdom Rune. And Yuragi's on his own mission as well, too. It looks like he is potentially just hunting. Oh, if he finds this poor old sniper. Topsy should be fine. He's under the invis himself. That's close, though. They're covering all, pretty much all sides of the map. Nobody can get outside on the side of Tundra. They get to get, I think they farm like one or two creep camps, one creep wave, a creep camp, and then they have to instantly run back to base with the way that OG's just sweeping constantly. Middle tower is under attack. Oh, the telescope on Thompson. He's ready for oh. the high ground offense. They might get the wisdom. Range. Snaking's on his way. He's well, going. Why OG never picked it up? Oh, wait. I mean, they're not going to expect it to still be there at 38 minutes. I mean, they might go check it. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, meanwhile, jump top, Skitter. He's gonna shout it on Speaker BTP out. No funny business here for Skitter. We'll get away. Check the wisdom room. Check it. It's there. It's so close. It's been sitting there well for the last three minutes. Hey, they're just trying to max. They're trying to get any of the sneaky farm that they can. Like you said, they probably don't go expect check. it there. Oh, but he's gonna go check 33. 33. He senses something up. Ha -ha. Easy wisdom room. Feet, feet. That's something. Push him towards that level 20. The smallest of gains. I mean, this whole Aegis, OG for the lead that they've had, they definitely opted to slow things down a bit, right? This Aegis is going to come to an end in 50 seconds. 
they're not going to get the chance by the looks of it to try for a high ground siege. So they are given time and space to Tundra here, Fog. Why, why, why do you think they sort of fell back on a uh, to, to go for these passive moments during the stage? I think they're just finishing up really big timing, really big timing items. So like 25 okay. hits on Yuragi, 20 yeah. uh, BKB finished up on BZM, I believe. There was one other thing that was almost finished up too. Yeah, MC, he pretty much has his Octarine done. Right. So I think they're just like, we're very close to some big items and maybe feeling, do we really even need an Aegis to break? the high ground. They just need to win a fight and the game's likely just over right after then. With this 24k lead, they absolutely can just dominate that fight. Sure. Thompson does get his BKB done, so will okay. have a bit of protection if he is getting jumped even on the high ground. Chance to separate himself from the Sven. Yuragi's hunting. This BKB on Skitter, it's... Okay, it's back up in five seconds, so he should be fine. At some point, though, someone is going to get caught on the side of Tundra here when they're doing these type of moves. MC on the prowl. Yeah, and if it is snaking, then... You know, that, it's not the worst for Tundra. They'll lose a support. Six, one, and 15 on the Mars. 33, it's now got the yours done outside of the Halberd. So when the BKB does come to an end on someone like Yuragi, you know, he, he's kitted out to just really disrupt the offensive potential of the spec. Shadow Dance the TP, no AOE stun. No Mars around to stop that. Skidder again getting away with being able to push out and play out on the map without getting caught. Checks the cloak. Yeah, tier four items being picked up here. My yeah, they're, con yeah, they're content with just like yep, yeah, just sending back. They're like, yeah, they're you guys, they're like, out here, like you guys want to just like farm whatever. We're getting way more out of the map. And I, Yuragi's literally getting to the points of like seven slotted now. <laughs> He's actually getting the swift blink refresher shoot soon on the horizon. Yeah. I guess they, they don't mind. They don't mind scaling. No. They feel that I don't blame giving them. extra minutes here to Tundra, it doesn't matter. Nope. Yeah, here in the minds of OG, they feel that one good jump will still end the game. And it's, it's very likely that, that will be the case. But it, as I say, it's definitely not like Tundra's getting nothing during this. No. Skeeter finding some good ways of getting out on the map. Same to be said for nine. Yeah. Thompson holding the high ground. They are getting quite a bit less, and now Skidder. I mean, just yeah, let's get the dark packed off. And that was the God Strength popped as well from Yuragi. So if Tundra's able to sort of get back out of this fight, it will begin a little bit of a moment where they know that OG will not come looking for them with Yuragi's God Strength on corner. Eleven stacks also built up, all trapped inside the base though. Told you. Just will hit some more creeps. Just watching Kit Track finish up a BKB. Even the Enchantress continuing to scale. Look at this Io and Ench. They're going to have like these five cores on the side of OG. And the Grim of the Bounty. Yeah, not finding anything. Yeah, probably at this point for OG, it's just going to be a case of, well, let's just wait for the next rush. Yeah. That I means it's getting to that point where it's getting pretty close. So maybe they'll just wait for it. Nine. Did catch a glimpse of him there. They've got him. They'll find Nine sneaking out on the map. Deleted. Might also know where Skeeter is. Skeeter, bounce on his TP. He's fine, but they are without nine for 45 seconds. Oh, where's the rune? BZM, closer and closer to his 25. Another item also about to be finished for him if you'd like to commit for it. The Hex, pretty much finished. They'll grab themselves the other wisdom. So that's, yeah, very, very close to BZM gonna be having that 25 once he pops it. Skitter. I'm gonna try and go for him. He does still have BKB available. Also, the Death Shroud to be back off cooldown in a couple of seconds. The re relocate coming back. By the spear. Horse back as well. Ravage in an attempt to try and keep him safe. Will the Lambs get the Death Shroud down? BKB and God Strength popped here. They'll turn over towards Skitter. Skitter's out of bounds. He cannot escape. Oh. Skitter and 33 taken out. They do have buybacks available. Snaking will fall. Thompson to the hide under the cover of the Invis from the Silver Edge. But zero damage done. Everybody's full HP. They still have a cheese on IO. They're jump in. They're gonna stun on the top two, but the triple buybacks come out here from Tundra. If OG can get everybody out alive, this is gonna feel fantastic for them bending out the three buybacks. Can they all survive this? Skeeter, he's gonna jump in. Thompson, he's outside of the base. He's trying to stand his ground outside the base. He's got the BKB. Will jump back up towards the high ground. They're holding their ground. They'll they take him. down Yuragi. They'll get one, and by the looks of it, they'll get two. Turning up towards mind control. They'll hold the defense. It's an expensive one with the triple buybacks, but they do manage to push OG back. Can they get another one with this track? Kit track looks like they should be able to claim it as well. I say that. Yeah, Skitter should they, be able to close the gap. This. I mean, the big thing will be they've got the creep wave already up to the river. If Tundra can shove this down the mid lane, maybe they could try and force some sort of buyback reaction from OG. 
at least get a tier two. Going toward high ground is still going to be quite a risk, but maybe it's something that they actually have to do because of how the game state is. They might have they, to take they, these they, crazy they risks. They have to go all in. Yeah. It really does feel with the fact that they've just used those three buybacks. Oh. But look at BZM and Seb at the bottom lane. They've already set up the push. They got this momentum going down. Will Seb leave him? No, he's going to take him up. Skitter, looks like he should be able to claim the tier two with those stacks. They're actually going to pop the glyph, so never mind on that one. A decent hit, but as you said, three buybacks. Three buybacks. And a massive, you know, OG, they dove pretty much t t toward the fountain there. That's why they actually got caught out from it, so. A small trickle forward, but a very small one still. And Roshan is up. Okay, well, if they can get that, then that's, yep. another, that's a pretty big step, because this is a free Aghanims. And Thompson is, I mean, with the Moonshard online, Disperser pretty soon, too. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if he spends up on the Disperser or if he does save for buyback himself. Because he's 9 inch gold away from it. He didn't use it in that last fight, right? True. So having the buyback on the Sniper could be pretty huge. As I imagine the Aegis will go the way of one of these cores that did expend buyback last time around. I think so. And Either. I think, what, 33 gets the Ags? Yeah. The constant gush spam. I mean, this is all about the high ground defense at this point, too. So, okay. I mean, it's I mean that's pretty big. Though. That's actually pretty huge. Now, for a team that's been as far behind as they have for the majority of this game, Tundra, they're, they're keeping the game alive. Only just. Only just. They are keeping it alive. Level 25 Edict. Get a little bit of damage onto the tower. See Thompson. Does he want to go all in, or does he want to play for buyback? He's close to 25 also, too. So the distance, I mean, this is all, look, it's all about the high ground defense. Uh, I mean, yes. Uh, 25 attack range talent and having the enchanted quiver, mm -hmm. you can sit right back. The game could just end really quickly in these next few moments, though, if OG sure. gets the catches onto one of these heroes that don't have that buyback. 33. He's farming a camp right now. They're going to jump snaking. And MC seems to know exactly where 33 is. Oh my <gasps> goodness. How. Oh my oh, god. Oh. He gets caught there, it's probably game over. It's probably just game. Oh my goodness, hi MC with wow. some Spidey senses almost catching him. Snaking, of course, still out for a long time. His buyback was one of the ones used before, so he's out for 80. And again, Skeeter, he's for a game as scary as this one, he has been able to find some nice spots to push out on the map. If the fights last a very, very long time, honestly, Skeeter oh, could make look some magic him, happen. But, oh, Skeeter! Is he able to get out of this one? What's he got? He, you know, BKB, I think it was in his backpack. It was in his he backpack. He's what the BKB. He tries for the TP now. He's dead. Uh oh. He will have BKB, but he won't have TP and no death shroud, no shadow dance. Skeeter in a trouble unless he can find the angle for the pounce, but they're blocking him off. No, no, they're not blocking him off enough though. He's still able to get the two pounces off the sun. It hits as the BKB comes to an end. No pounce for a few seconds, and that's more than enough time for your argument to finish him off. Skeeter out for two minutes. No buyback available. Oh, he took a risk. He squawked the BKB in. He tried to TP before that Aegis gets popped. Maybe if he just does it patiently, then maybe he just at least gets back to base. But either way, then he won't have BKB when he's back at base, so could have similar repercussions anyway. As OG, they find their winner to go for high yeah, ground. They, they, this could be it. Yep. 100 seconds, no Slark. Four versus five. As Grim will be back up in a few seconds. Easy he's in. He's actually able to get the Yule set up on the Thompson. Thompson's caught by the stun. They've got to get Thompson back to safety. He'll be able to knock himself out with the grenade. It's 33. Tries to stand in between Thompson and the team. Thompson starting to do a decent chunk of damage. They've got a lot of heals, a lot of sustain here on OGs. They take the tier 3 tower down. Uh, he's ooming the, he's ooming them as well. Like, Yuragi just lost all of his Jump mana. Forward, they get the spear push back onto 9. Nine's outside of the base. Nine's gone. He has buyback available. Thompson holding. I, he still kind of just tickles them. He burns their mana, but he does really just tickle. Thompson, now oh, the Ravage! The Ravage! But at the same time, the Spear was there. Mike Shaw's able to jump over the Ravage, get the Spear onto Thompson. BKB's come out for the two of them. Thompson steps out of the arena. Still a whole minute without Skeeter. 33 slides to the side, but Mike Shaw, the kid right there, trying to run down. Where's the night. damage? Thompson, he's looking towards Mike Shaw. Another jump back here with the grenade. BZM, he's going straight for him. e blaze there. He was forced to the side. He's in with the Invis, but they'll catch him with the stun. Thompson's out. He'll buy back. Nine trying to draw the attention of OG away from the fountain. He did buy back for this one, and he's now out as well for 80. It's just 33 and Thompson left behind. 30 seconds until Skeeter. Jump forward, BZM. He's in with the Yules. They'll try and break the combo here with the Yules from 33 back over towards BZM, but Thompson's being caught underneath the tier fours. He's got the Invis, but they've got the distance. Cannot hide. Thompson's out of the game for two minutes. OG looking to have done it here in this game, too, as they're onto the tier fours. Only 33 left alive. We'll see if Skeeter gets to see one more fight before the game falls. He's back in five. They have the fortification. 
Is there any sort of crazy play that two of them can do? I don't think so. Don't think so. Refresh her. Onto onto the Ancient Speeder. What can he do to stop them? OG, they just focus on the objective. Looking to close this one up. They've caught him with the stun. Chain stuns on the Skeeter. It's over. OG will take game two. Whew.